Hey everybody, welcome back to Live Free and Tool Line. Have you ever thought, what if I lose power? What am I going to do? What if it's a prolonged outage? And what if it is zero outside? Or it's cold or below freezing? You really gotta keep your house warm. Have you ever really thought about it? Well, I've been on a mission to promote some type of self-sustaining system for our house and at least for heat and some small electronics. I believe I found that solution if we found ourselves in that situation. So hang on, we're gonna get into it today. So as you can see right now, I have a solar panel up here and I have a solar panel down here. Now this is my mobile uh, solar charging station, if you will. Now I have a farm and if I'm out on the farm, if I'm out, I don't know, on my side by side or somewhere like that, I can actually take these panels. This panel's just clamped onto this work cart. It's really nice because I can charge all my batteries without plugging into the grid. So it's just a nice little charging station. Head down below, you can see I charge my batteries for my Ryobi tools. But for now, we're gonna focus on this right here. Now this is a Life EPO4 lithium ion 12 volt 100 amp battery. And how I use this is I actually use a solar charge controller. It comes off the solar panel. Now I'm only charging this off of one solar panel. Now I got these solar panels from Harbor Freight. They're the monocrystal solar panels. They used to be $100. I think they're $120, $30, but you can get discounts. And this is a little cheap uh, solar charge controller that I got, and it literally works awesome. Now, if you wanna create more power out of this, you can actually get this really cool uh, solar charge controller connector, and that can connect up to 400 watts right there, and you should be good. So you can connect up to four of these panels, and you can do a lot with that power. But what I'm doing right now is charging this up. I'm off the grid, and I'm gonna use this really nice power inverter from Ryobi. This is an 800 watt power inverter and it works with batteries it works with your vehicle and it works with a battery like this now why am i using a lithium-ion battery a one finger you can lift it it's super light super easy to get around so you can take it really wherever you want to so as i take a quick little walk <laughs> with my lithium-ion battery i just wanted to say you can only use just about 50% of the deep cycle lead acid batteries that comes in a typical system um, or in your vehicle. But with these lithium ion batteries, you can actually use 90 to 100% of it. So it makes a lot more sense. You get a lot more capacity and it's a lot lighter. Use this inverter and you've got some pretty serious power. Now, how am I using this to heat my house? So whenever we don't have power, this is what we're using. This is our pellet stove. We got this from Tractor Supply. It has been a very good pellet stove. We've had it for just about a couple of years and it saves us a ton of money and a ton of energy because we're not using as much electricity if we're gonna use like a mini split or something like that. So this is rated just around 300 watts at 120 volts. Now, I know what you're gonna say, why don't you use the Ryobi 40 volt power inverter? Well, I did try that trader for 300 volts as well. However, there is a percentage within there if you get, I'm sorry, it's rated within 300 watts. And if you get within so much of that threshold, well, it shuts down. So it wouldn't get up through the startup process. Therefore, this 800 watt Ryobi inverter, which I've gotta say is pretty awesome because you can put an 18 volt battery you can power it from a cigarette lighter if you're gonna put a computer or something in your car. And then the biggest thing right here, you can see these, there's attachments right here and these just screw on and off. It's a toolless type of change. So I can just take this lead right off and I can put it right back on it. And this is really convenient. And these go to these big clamps right here. Now, all you need to do is we're gonna set this up here. We are going to clamp to our giant lithium ion battery. This thing is awesome. We're gonna clip that there. We're gonna clip this here. Make sure we have a good connection. Now, typically for something like this, I do have very large wires that we can screw down on both, but for demonstration purposes, this is what we're doing. So all we need to do at this point, so we're just gonna press and hold this button here. Now it's gonna come on. And then right now it is showing us it's DC, USB, 13 volts, and we have the light illuminated right here, 800 watts. So we're gonna get the maximum power out of that. Now if we click this again, it's gonna show us the output. That's gonna be the wattage output. So let's go ahead and see what our input in. 
Let's go ahead and plug this in right here. This is super simple. Plug it in. Now you can go ahead and power things through your 12 volt here. You have a USB-C and USB-A right there. So let's lay that down. Let's go ahead and turn on the pellet stove. The inducer fan just came on and then pellets are going to start dropping down and then it actually has a resistor igniter so it's going to heat that up and then it's going to ignite the pellets and then that's your highest draw so let's pull into here and let's watch this work so you can see how it actually flows okay so it's starting to smoke right now okay there's the flame and right there, it's putting out 293 watts is the pull. I don't know if you can see, that's really hard to see. So this is staying steady at 293 watts right now. I guess the igniter is still on. You can take a closer look inside of the fire chamber. So it is working really well. The next thing that's gonna come on is the blower motor. And when that comes on, we'll see what the wattage is doing. Okay, so the blower just kicked on and we're in high fire and we are right around 182 watts. So say 180 to 185 watts. That's with the blower going. And this is pretty typical and this is the firing rate that we typically have within my home, especially for heating the uh, central area for the house. Now, this battery right here is a 1200 watt battery. So this is a 100 amp hour at 12 volts, so 1200. I mean, basically that's how you find power, which is wattage. At, um, and this does 800 watts, but this is just the capacity, right, of what this can put out um, at one time. So you're really gonna be able to run this. If this runs, I don't know, what are we at now? All right, now it's at 180. So we're pretty stable at 180. So we can probably average this whole thing out at 200, and that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, six hours. Now you're only gonna probably get 90% of runtime out of this battery. So we could probably say you get five, five and a half hours out of this battery running this particular machine. Now that's just on average and a quick estimate, but I think it's a pretty safe estimate. And um, I think it's something that would help us out. So everybody, I hope that this helps you out. My wife has been on me about getting this. This is a pretty cheap uh, way of getting this power. This battery was $250 to $300 online. I know there's a $50 discrepancy, but I think I got a sale on it. Go on Amazon, you can check these batteries out. Um, this right here is right around $100 and it comes with all these really cool accessories. So for less than $400, I don't know, less than $500 anyways. You can actually get a backup power supply system for when you have power outages. And you see a demonstration that I run it on. You could run your refrigerator, whatever, what have you on this. And it could last longer or it could be shorter. I really can't see your situation, but I know for us, this is something that works out very well. Now I can get another one of these and then I can have, you know, 2,500 watts and then we can double our runtime or have one charging outside with a solar panel um, while we have this one running and then you can keep changing them out or you can get a couple more now to put it in perspective um, ryobi does make a really nice power supply or at least a power bank that you can get and that is an 1800 watt supply and, you know there's a bunch of other jayco and other uh, products that you can get too but i wanted to show you a different way of doing this now, if I had my preferred method, I would get those power banks from them, but they are right around $1,000, so this is under half of that price. And my dog's barking, so they're telling me it's probably time to go, but I hope that this was helpful in some way. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. Don't forget to share. Sharing is caring, as I'm told, and that's what I tell my kids, so please do that. It does help me out. And I really hope to see you all in the next video. Take care. i got to go let my dog out.